Peace, family. So, yeah, um, I'm out here in Fort Lauderdale. First of all, I want to say congratulations to Hakeem Green, Jasmine Nunez Green, that's who uh, was down here for their wedding. So, if everybody could take a little time out at some point in the day and go to Mr. Green's page, Hakeem Green, and wish him and his wife uh, you know, a happy future together. Congratulate them on their on they, uh, marriage. You know, that'd be appreciated. You know what I mean? My man Hawk is a good person, man. Good dude. Done a lot for me. You know, opened a lot of doors for me. And, uh, you know, I'm very appreciative of him and everything. You know, everything he's done for me, him and his, his lovely wife. So, um, you know... Yeah, Jazz, I'm stuck here at the airport. Don't leave till uh, 5, 5.15 it is right now, but we'll see. I got a feeling I might be here all night again. Um, so, yeah, um, let's have a conversation. I'm not sure if this, uh, if all these delays has anything to do with any protests or the climate of the, you know, the country right now. Um, I don't know if it seems like every plane here has been delayed. Uh, it, it's incredible. I don't know what to tell you. I almost got on the wrong plane. Uh, seems like it's getting back to normal now, but we'll see. I'll give you all a call, Jasmine, if, uh, if, if, I'm, if I have to stay here at night. If I do, I'm going to have them put me up in a hotel. You know, that's right. Um, so, yeah, people, uh, I don't do this often. So if you got any questions, anything, any topics you feel like we should be talking about, you know, ask me about or, you know, just shoot them at me. And um, I'll do my best to answer them if I can or point you in a direction towards someone who can. First, let me give a shout-out. If I forget anybody, please don't be offended. But, you know, got to shout out my people, man. Say peace to Clico, the Nasuk Bitti, at Clico, check them out. If you want that comedic information, you want you want insight on it that you're not going to get from nobody else, check my man Clico out. All right, he's on my friend list. All these people in the name will be on my friend list. Um, yeah, I will, Jazz. Um, nah, I don't know anything about Hindu or Vedic principles. I've read a few books, not enough to convey the information. You know, I've read, I've read multiple books on multiple cultures, but at this point in my life, I don't feel like, you know, I can speak on too many things outside of my experiences and historically, you know, what I know about my people, you know, though I try to be as, you know, worldly as possible. At this point in time, in our evolution as people, I feel like we need to be getting certain information straight from the source. So, you know, if you're, in if you're interested in the Hindu and the Vedic uh, sciences, and, 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 you know, you should definitely look into the specific books that uh, reflect their culture. You know, I've read, I've read, uh, the Enton El Elish. I've read the Epic of Creation. Um, but I, I read all these books probably 20 years ago, so I'd have to refresh. You know, I'd have to refresh all my um, all my knowledge on that. Um, well, I tell you what, if you're curious about the relationship between uh, the Hindu Vedic script. And uh, Kemet, I would point you in the direction of my man Clico. He can uh, he can definitely shed some, shine some light on that. And then you also have the elder Enfudishi. If you're if you're aware of him, that's probably a question you could direct to him, and he will give you a a seriously in depth answer. Um, but I know this. 
all these ancient cultures have a root in what we call a mother mound culture. So I would say look into the origins of the mound cultures that you find in that area. But no, th there is a definite relationship though. I just, you know, I, I just don't feel like I'm qualified to really go into it. That might be something you might want to holler at Quincy Hot about. That young, that young brother is, you know, on point with it. Um, definitely not somebody else I want to shout out, Quincy Hot, doing things. Uh, haven't seen the brother mislead people or nothing. You know what I mean? Comes with good information, so. Hit up Quincy Hot with that question. Um, another brother I want to shout out is uh, it's like my second video. <laughs> um, like to talk, I'll give a shout out to Noble Pa. That's my family right there. Um, yeah, he turned me on to, well, he confirmed a lot of information that uh. I had knowledge of concerning our families in the Louisiana territories, you know. But once again, if you want to learn more about those tribes in that area, we have a bunch of proficient uh, family members that can really take you through the science. So uh, hit them up, hit up Noble Pie. You want that, that Yamasi, Washita, Choctaw information. Looking for that Anastasi information, you know, Quincy Hop. Looking for that comedic information. Hit up Clico. Um, I'm going to keep shouting out people as, you know, they pop in my head. If anybody got any uh, suggestions of any people I should be directing people to, please feel free to, uh, to write it. And um, I'll definitely give that person a shout out. Um, before I left for... Uh, to come down here to Fort Lauderdale, I was working on episode one of the Turtle Snaps Back. I literally was working on it up until the cab pulled up. So that's something hopefully I'll have done in the next few days and, and the family can watch it. C L E C Q U O T. C L E C Q U O T. Peace, family. Hey, Trisha, how you doing? It's my family right there. Trisha, Jessica Johnson. She got that information too. She be sitting on it. She, she don't. She don't. Uh, she don't get it to people as much. But yeah, she got that information. She definitely uh, has been educating me in in the inboxes, and I, and I appreciate everything that she shares with me. Yeah, that's right, Clico. That's it. Yep. It's only one online boy got vision. He sees things other people don't see. Trust me. If you don't know who he is, he was the uh, brother that was standing with me in the first video I did on Brother Rich's show. Yeah, uh, me and him, have, we have a few videos together. He does uh, spoken word. If you, go on, uh, if you go on my YouTube page and you surf through uh, my archives, you'll see a video entitled Sins of the Flesh. And um, free energy. Both powerful pieces. His work, my vi my visual video work. You know what I mean. So that's a, that's somebody who I collab with. Hopefully, I'll be able to help him bring a lot more things to the table. He got a lot of stuff lined up for you for the people. He just got to go ahead and make it happen. Um, let's see what's going on other than that. Oh. How about this young lady that did the video? Powerful young sister. Don't know her name, but obviously her video was on my page. I just want to speak about the youth. And, uh, you know, was the, the youth, they explosive, they powerful, they fiery, they got that energy, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, you got one time to mislead the youth. And once they see through you, you know what I mean? They coming with that fire. That sister right there, ugh, pure flames. Like, the cussing and all that, I don't even care about that. That's, uh, she was sharing that, that, that passion, 
and that love for her people. And um, I'm very, I'm very proud, as I said before, to be able to go on my social media sites and see people reflecting our story from their perspective. You know, I went to high school, graduated high school in 1988. In 1988, the uh, high school graduation curriculum was one year of science, two years of math, four years of English, uh, two years of history, I believe. So, needless to say, um, though I graduated in the top half of my class, I got a 1300 on my SATs, I was never one of the stupid people. When I got to college, I felt like a moron, I felt like an idiot. I was a freshman in college taking basic math classes because I didn't take algebra or calculus in high school. And the reason I didn't is because I wasn't pushed to do it. And you tell a kid all you need is two years of math, you know, at that point I was like, yo, I can't stand this shit. I took my two years freshman and sophomore year and that was that. You know what I mean? Um, science. I only need one year of science. Love you too, cousin. Only need a uh, one year of science, and um, so my freshman year, we took I took a science class, and that was it. Never looked back. So I graduated from high, my senior year. I had uh, I think I had four art classes, maybe three art classes, two study halls, uh, English, and um, a history class. You know, what I mean, I skated through high school my senior year. Um, you know. I like to think high school was the time when I became a uh, nigga. You know what I mean? That's when I got bitter. Prior to high school, I had friends from all different uh, backgrounds, ethnicities. You know what I'm saying? Um, racism was something that we just watched on TV. You know what I mean? It wasn't nothing that we really encountered. I mean, you know, you get to people follow you in stores and stuff. But, you know, that was as much because you were young. You know what I mean? But, um... Cause yeah, I used to go stealing with my white boys and shit up in the mall. So yeah, but um, crazy same white boy I used to go stealing with in the mall. Um, got to high school and he barely knew me. Even today, on Facebook right now, he's a friend on my page and we have never interacted. And when I say he was, he was like one of my best friends up until high school. I used to sleep over his house go play, you know what I mean? People in the hood be like, yo, what you doing over there in the white boys' neighborhood all the time? Why are you fucking with the white boys? I'm like, man, they got all types of shit we don't got over here. Or at least I didn't have growing up. They be like, what? I'm like, dinner, dessert, simple shit, you know what I mean? Parents at home at night. When I grew up an only child. My mother was a hard worker, beautiful woman. She was, um, she was, she was stricken with a uh, nervous disorder disease. So, you know, by the time I was sophomore in high school, my mom was already showing signs of her, um, her failing health and things of that nature. So it was, um, you know, I grew up kind of very much uh, on my own, other than when I was with my family. You know I mean, when I, when I spent time with my family, I got to have, you know, I got to have that, um, got to be in that environment. But uh, for the most part, you know, I was a latchkey kid. You know, had to be be in the house by six o'clock. That's when my mother got home. That's how it was for me growing up in Red Bank. Um, once I moved to Temple Falls, it was a little different because the neighborhoods are a little different. You can kind of let you, let the kids be a little freer. So you know, um, but yeah, you know. But I grew up always knowing about my indigenous history. Grew up, uh, you know, in tune with who we were, even though we didn't express it in the manner in which people expect. You know, a lot of people say, oh, you, you an Indian? First thing they want to do is they want to see feathers. Um, they want to they associate you with all the, with all the, uh, you know, stereotypical concepts of what an Indian is. But the most important things to natives, people who you might call Indians, was taking care of their family. How do you take care of your family? Take care of your family by being a 
farm work, by being a hunter, by being a gatherer, you know what I mean? So a lot of the um, qualities of the culture that we retained uh, in terms of being Indians were the obvious things like agriculture. We were farmers. So when you look at my family's history, you'll see that we held farms up until the 1900s, up until we lost our land. Like we were self-sufficient. We took care of ourselves because we had land. That's what indigenous means. It means you own your land, you got your land, you can live off your land. It means you come from that land, you run with that. And that's the thing we had. So, you know, my family, we assimilated early. We assimilated in the 1600s. You understand? We assimilated long before they even encountered the Red Indian, right, the Western tribes. So even for a lot of these Western tribes, they don't know of us because they never had the opportunity to meet us. You know, it's not like we had cell phones back then. We didn't have the Internet. You didn't know what was going on 10 miles away, let alone 400 miles away. You know what I mean? So I don't know why we expect these Western, Midwestern Indians to co-sign us and know who we are. They did not know who we were. You know what I mean? The same way they never encountered Columbus. The same way they not the Wampanoag, but they cry about Thanksgiving. Now we do know that there was a massacre in the 1800s that took place on Thanksgiving. You know what I mean? So I, I respect, I, you know, obviously I respect that. I would never deny those people of the pain they suffered. But um, it seems they are so quick to deny us of the Holocaust and the pain we went through. And they have no real respect or knowledge that we are the template. We're the ones that they, 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 we're the ones that they, everything they're doing to them now, they did to us 400 years ago. Everything they did to them 200 years ago, they did to us 400 years ago. Everything we've seen taking place on the continent of North America over the past 400 years, they did to the eastern tribes, to the uh, southern tribes, hundreds of years before they did it to anybody. So when we talk about the Holocaust, talk about Hitler, Hitler got his cue from what was going on here in the Americas, going back to the 1600s. So, you know, let's, um, let's not focus so much on these western tribes and getting them to co-sign us. Let's focus on bringing back the identity of our people, of your family. Every one of your families is, comes from a tribe. So it's, what we have to do is trace back through different methods who our family was in terms of tribal identity. You know, um, got this whole thing, African American now is, is the legal term. Trump just changed. Black History Month, the African American History Month, which now would, uh, it takes away our ability to look not just at the so-called black cultures here in North America, but it, I mean all over the world, but it, and it forces us to only look at the history of what took place here. And, uh, you know, like they just boxing us in. That's like, a, uh, that's, it's like another, um, it's like another travel ban, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're telling us we can't even travel beyond these uh, borders when we reflect on our history, you know what I'm saying? So I'm not with nothing African-American unless you're talking about somebody from Nigeria marrying somebody from a tribe here, right? Somebody from Nigeria marries somebody from Peru. They have a child. That child's African-American. I'm with that. But uh, all this other stuff, we got to self-identify ourselves. We got to stop letting everybody else tell us who we are. And when I say that, I mean, don't let me tell you who you are. I was speaking to my man Clico today, and I, I told him, I was like, yo, bro, don't, don't, don't let me tell you who the fuck you are. You know what I mean? Um, you know, Clico's heavy into, he's heavily into comedic sciences. Like I said, you know. Somebody got somebody got problems with me and they want to bring Kemet into it, I go get my man. You know what I'm saying? Like and, but you know, me and him have the conversations, you know, and he, he freely expresses, you know, the fact that he doesn't necessarily know exactly who his tribe is, you know what I mean? 
but he identifies with Kemet, and that's beautiful, you know what I mean? But he doesn't discourage other people to not investigate their own culture and historical background, which a lot of these other Kemetic followers do. They just want you to sit in Kemet somewhere, and they don't want you to look throughout the world, not just here in America, because we just sent them people all over the place. I'm trying to read the, uh, trying to read some of these um, comments, but the glare from the sun is in my eyes too. So, peace, family. Peace, Thomas. Peace, Anya. Kyle, what's good, bro? Been a minute. You know what it is, cause you know I'm out here trying to get home, man. Uh, how you doing out there? Had a family out there. Your son look more and more like you every day. Hmm. Else, what's going on, man? Yeah, family, man. We got to get back to family. The beautiful thing about family is you don't have to believe that the same thing your family believes for you still to be family, for you to still care about them. You know what I mean? I got aunts, uncles, that were Seventh day Adventists. They were all different types of things. But when I asked them, who are we? Oh, we Lenape. But this aunt's personal belief was, you know, she's a, this one was Jehovah Witness. This one was a Christian. You know, my my family, the church I grew up attending, I was an altar boy. Peace, Pat. What's good, man? Yeah, my cousin Pat on now. We was altar boys together. We got our feet washed together. I don't think I washed my feet the night before. And I was scared to death. My feet was going to stink when they took my shoes off. But, um, yeah, you know, we came up through the church, you know. But church was, yo, honestly, for me, growing up, church was more about not disappointing my family. See what I'm saying? We, we rip and run all week. We in the streets all week, raising hell. But if you go to church on Sunday, the family still sees you in a certain light. So that's what we did. Like I said, man. And you know, church had that brunch. You know, had that brunch. Gonna get you a good meal on Sundays. Shout out to St. Thomas Episcopal Church in Red Bank, New Jersey. Give a shout out to all my heads in Red Bank, all my people, all my people in Tenton Falls, Eaton Town, Neptune, on out to Asbury, Belmar, you know what I mean, on up to Matawan. What's up, cuz? You know, I can't forget Matawan. Um, Jersey, man, it's Indian territory. I mean, the whole country's in Indian territory. But we still retained a lot of the, a lot of the names, in the forms of streets, towns, lakes, parks. So you know, if we fully understood what what was going on, we'd still be able to speak our language because so many words are encoded in uh, in the history. Yeah, you went for the snacks, right? Yeah, I hear you, Pat. You know, come on now, you know what we went for. It's it's funny, um. When I read my family's history, it talks about how all the good women were in church. So men would go to church to find their wives. That's how my grandfather, Leroy Rock, met his wife, Cassie Althea Richardson. Met her at church. You know what I mean? So, and also another thing about church, uh, for hundreds of years in the church, indigenous people ran their um, ran their tribal governments out the church. So from the outside you see the cross, you see all these different things. But what was going on inside the church was very different than what was going on in any other type of uh, basic Christian or Catholic church. You know, what was going on inside the church was we was discussing family issues. There was a time when you couldn't be a member of a church unless you lived in that community. Now we have churches where people drive from hours away to go back to go to their church. That, that's not what that's not what churches were initially intended for houses of worship. You know, um, within our one of the, the, the uh, pardon me within our family churches we kept um, our tribal records, we kept our land deeds, we kept all the information that we held sacred. See, we understand that we adopted. Many of us adopted Christianity 
because we knew we were under siege. We knew what was going on. So we adopted Christianity in, in a certain way of life, thinking that was going to keep these savages off of us. And for a while it did. I'm going to give you an example. Any, anybody who, when you start really researching your, um, your tribal information, your family information, you need to research the history of what denomination you were, right? Me personally, my family are Episcopalians. Now, when you search the history of the Episcopalian Church, you'll find out that the Episcopalian Church is the version of the Anglican Church in England. Now, when you look at the Anglican Church, you understand that the Anglican Church was not aligned with Rome. The Anglican Church was the Church of England and was at war with Rome. So, when we became Episcopalians, it was... It was, to, it was to create a bond with a certain group of Europeans who were fighting against another group of Europeans. Right? So we became praying Indians or Christians, thinking that if we took on these ways, these people would see us the same way they saw themselves and they would not burn down our villages. And you know, it's crazy because a lot of people say, oh, you sold out, this and that. Let me tell you something. They burnt villages down. They killed people. Nothing that anybody here has ever, ever experienced. Yeah, you got your niggas in the hood that got shot, got killed, this and that. But you need to start reading about some of these massacres that took place all up and down the East Coast. They were massacring tribes, women and children. They would kill the men off and go kill the women and children. So you got to understand, if you thought becoming a Christian could save you, you did it. You know, a lot of us play Monday night, Monday morning quarterback, talk about what they would have did back then. I see niggas get bullied every day and don't do nothing now. So don't tell me about what you would have did against an organized group of people who, come, who came here to conquer you for your land. You understand? And, and this shit happened in waves. They, they didn't come here. They didn't come here. Why was they doing it? Because they was... I mean, yo, you got good people, you got bad people. I can't tell you why they did it. That be how, how am I supposed to know why they did it? They came here for resources. Some of them were our friends, some of them weren't. If you want to know why, you have to study the history of the Patriots and the Loyalists. Just go read about the Patriots and the Loyalists. Google the shit. Don't go beyond Wikipedia. You can read the Wikipedia, but go beyond Wikipedia. If you can, when you Google things, always try to find some type of university PDF right don't don't settle until you get to a university style PDF right and then start digging into that and, and find something that's old find something that goes back to the early 1800s right and read read that information like Wikipedia ugh. Like we, we can't base our information on Wikipedia even though Wikipedia has good information I'm not gonna sit here in front like it don't but um and also you got to understand that the Europeans that came here, they came here as slaves, right? So when they were able to come up, they knew nothing other than that system. You know, they were thieves. They were coming out of, you know, that's why you got to go back. You got to watch King Arthur. You got to watch all these films that reveal what was going on in Europe. And when these Europeans came here, once they got their shit together, they started doing the same thing that was being done to them. But guess what? That's what we do too. You know, I mean, they hit us with the color scale. They hit us with white supremacy. They hit us with the whole one drop rule. So now we use that same thing against our other brothers and sisters. Now, obviously, I'm of the lighter persuasion. So people are going to say, oh, well, of course you feel a certain way. Of course you're going to say darker the hue doesn't matter. You know what I mean? But truthfully, right. That shit matters if the white man is trying to extract that shit from you. <laughs> That's what matters to you. You know, when you out on the beach, when me and you out on the beach, ain't nobody thinking about you darker, you... Like, that's crazy. That's what the white... That's the, that's the disease the white man put in your mind through his sciences. Now we cling to his sciences like they are indigenous truths. Like, yo, I'm still trying to find out who this tribe in Africa called scientists are. I keep hearing everything about Africa and, and these scientists keep telling us I'm like first of all what indigenous 
tribe or nation in Africa ever made the claim that all humanity comes from them? Who made that claim? Show me so I can study from them. Now some people will say, oh, the Congo, you know what I mean? Were the, were the people of the Congo speaking for themselves? Because I can show you Native American creation stories and I can show you histories of tribes that say they came right from out of this particular mound right here. Or, you know what I mean? And that's some that places in the Americas. I'm not going to go through the, the exact, um, through the exact uh, tribes, but let me just say this to you. Go look up. I'm a big Prince fan. Right? We all know the scene from Purple Rain. The first times I seen some titties in my life. I ain't gonna lie. I know it was the first time I fell in love. But go look up the history of Lake Minnetonka. Right? And find out about the 60 foot primordial mound that was in the middle of that lake. And you're gonna find out that there's a creation myth attached to that. So if the European came here and asked those particular tribes where they originated, they're going to tell you Lake Minnetonka. Right? But as we say, scientists and Dana, I don't know who the fuck Dana is, she can't even spell. Scientists and Dana tell us everything about ourselves that we feel we can't find on our own. The oldest DNA test is your mother. Like, unless we're gonna start calling mothers liars, you know what I mean? Unless we're gonna start shitting on our grandparents, you know what I mean? I could doubt my father. I could doubt my father. You know what I mean? Can't doubt your mother. So, um, yeah, man, I'm just sitting in this airport, man, just running my mouth. Peace, darling, what's good? Kill some time, man. Peace, Nicole. How you doing? Uh, um, let's talk about race a little. Obviously, I, I talked a little bit about that in one of the last videos I did. Um, I just implore people to do, do the research for themselves. Yeah, bro, you know, definitely I'm going to be as safe as I can, but once that plane take off, I, I, it's out my hands. I kiss my ass goodbye every time I get on the plane. Um, <sighs> yeah, I try to give people good messages, man. I got some ill shit, too. I was talking to Cleco. I was like, listen, I got I got some some bombs I could drop on niggas, but I'm I'm a, I'm a I'm going to save those for when I'm confronted by people who want to, you know what I mean, who want to be romantic and want to talk that bullshit. Because see, as much as I tell you about the good of my family, I could tell you just as much about the bad. Oh, yes. I could tell you about it. Now, a lot of people brag that they this, they that, right? How many people will tell you that their ancestors hunted runaway slaves? I'm not proud of it. It's just a part of the history. Had a great, great uncle that hunted runaway slaves. And he, and he received land in payment for it. My grandfather did not agree with it, and he wanted nothing to do with the land. All right? This is why a lot of our land was just abandoned. You know what I mean? Um, caused somewhat of a rift between people in my family. I remember my aunt, I have a, you know, I have an aunt that, story goes, she couldn't stand to even be around this individual, you know what I mean? I don't know how old he was at the time, this was long after he was doing the things he was doing. But anybody that's familiar with New Jersey knows that we have a long history with the Underground Railroad. So, during, uh, during, you know, times of, of, of assisting runaways, there'd be times where you almost almost had to sacrifice something. Um, 
my family, truthfully, I'm, I'm going to tell you what happened with my family. Um, we didn't have slaves, we had indentured servants. And based on the agreements and the treaties, all the indentured servants in uh, Monmouth County were imported from Barbados. All right? So, nah, we didn't. Nah, I can't say we didn't, because I can show you pictures, and I always thought it was odd, but I can show you pictures of my Uncle Arnold and the employees at his uh, printing shop. And a lot of them were, were, looked like dusty, poor-looking white boys. So that's something I can look into, you know what I mean? But this was like, this was, this was like the 60s. This wasn't back in the day, but it always struck me odd that with such a large family that we had uh, groups of, of, of white youth working for us, you know what I mean? But my family had farms and yeah, they imported uh, 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 indentured servants from Barbados, and they, they worked the fields. Um, one of the farms was located on, uh, uh, I think it's Hans. I forgot the name of the road. But, um, peace, peace Architect. Yeah, it's my man Architect online. Yo, Architect is doing big things. He's doing big things. I want to, uh, you know, Give a shout out to him and his brother. Uh, Jeff, definitely check them out. R K I T E C H, architect. He's on my friend list. They got some things going on. Uh, I believe it's in Kannapolis, North Carolina. Is that right, brother? Where your brother's at? And then uh, architect is located out on the island, out on Strong Island. He's got a. a Hello, how you doing? This is uh, Hakeem's mother just joined us. Beautiful woman that told me she thinks of me, thinks of me as uh, another one of her sons, and I appreciate that. She uh, she uh, shared some wisdom with me, and uh, it's always appreciated. Yeah, but um. A man, architect, got a got extensive history on Long Island hip hop. When I say extensive, I'm talking about real hip hop, not just some cat on the street mixing people down in his basement. 